it's bad. Bad O'Shea. You should see from over here. Bad. <laughs> Shut it. Lots of you have asked for some feed advice. This guy is behind the scenes, him and my vet. And I really think before you get into sheep farming or just shortly after you get into sheep farming, find some good people to work with. And for me, that's my feed company, who Jamie is a representative for. So that's Grand Valley Fortifiers. Can I drop names? Sure. I'm going to drop their name. This is not a paid advertisement, but hey, if Grand Valley wants to give me money. Or buy you lunch. Or a set. Oh, you did buy me lunch. Oh, yeah. He did buy me lunch. And the other one is a vet. I strongly recommend having a relationship with a vet, wouldn't you say, Jamie? Yep. And that's they go hand in hand. <laughs> Absolutely. And I've learned the thing about this whole, our little trio, I'm in the barn and these guys have a lot of the technical advice that I need. And they also um, have a different, because they're not in it every day, they see things that I am almost numb to. It's good to have another set of eyes, but even just for your own profitability in your barn, I think it's very important to have a good team around you. Jamie's never seen behind the scenes of Sandy doing vlogs. He just gets to see them and critique them or laugh at them. Number one, the first step of, of this whole thing is to figure out what your farm looks like, how many ewes you have, do you have the ability to grow your own feed? Are you gonna buy your own feed? Um, what does that all look like? And I can't answer that for you. Jamie can't answer that for you. All we are doing is telling you how I come to our own rations on our farm. We've been growing 60 acres of hay for 500 ewes. That's kind of what the goal was originally. I would say after the first year that changed, the first year it's that establishment year. I don't think we yielded as much as, as Depend, yeah. As after the first year, we started to yield a lot more in that year. Yeah, so I you would have say, to plan to have a little extra on a, if it's your very first year or make a sure bunch you, of new seeding, you right. have to have a contingency plan. Right. In a really good situation, you have extra feed that you're able to sell. Right. Which you guys have been able to do now for a couple of years. Yeah, we've, we've been able to sell some just because I think we probably plan on too much, which I, is never a bad thing unless you're married to a grain farmer that would rather grow corn on 20 of those, say, acres. So I guess that's that's your first step is just like, are you growing it? Are you buying it? So that's number one. I would say number two, once you figure out how you're going to store it, harvest your hay, get it put away, let it in style, or do you take it? You usually take a sample you can, right at You can harvest. do samples either fresh or fermented. Okay. So depending on the time of the year, we, we want to let it meant for right. three, four, five weeks. Also depends on when we're gonna need it. Right, Jamie always comes and gets a feed sample from me as soon as I open up a bag. And then uh, they do a, I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, they do a feed analysis. They get it take, sent away and figure out what my feed looks like. Now this year was crazy. That's why we test. Right. Because it's not the same, it's not the two same. years in a row, two cuts in a row, and we'll formulate around what, what we the have. feed sample tests like. This, look, this is haylage. I'm not sure if that was first cut or second cut. Oh, how do you, because there's grass? Yeah, the head, grass is our head. Okay, it's first cut. I am feeding right now my ration. Would you believe me? First cut, I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> I can tell by the smell. How? I can't, I'm just exactly. telling you that. You're such a liar. Example of grass is headed out. It's hard, it goes blurry, you gotta go. Oh. It's a sec, let it focus. There, so beautiful. <laughs> we have first cut in the ration, we have third cut in the ration, which looks very similar. We also feed corn, just corn. And because the protein was low on the first cut hay this year, we actually had to bring in an extra protein supplement for the lactating ration. So that is some soybean meal. So that's just crushed up, right? Is this crushed up soybean, Jamie? Well, they've taken the oil out of the soybeans and this is a byproduct. Kind of looks soybean like flour, meal. like a yep. grainy flour. So it's high in protein. Because what happened is I went along this year and fed first cut as if I'd always fed the first cut and the and uh, my, what group did I call you? And I say, these weaning weights were terrible. My ewes look under condition. What is going on? Because usually they look really good. And you said, 
did we ever add the protein to the lactation ration? I said no, because I'm too cheap. We added it. You didn't add it. They added it. I didn't. It was on Let's the sheet. Um, also. Oh yeah, premix. This is what I kind of rely on Jamie the most for. So it looks like crushed up stones. <laughs> it's mineral. Are we at number four? Number three? I don't know where we are. Yeah. I haven't been staying, sticking my list. Number three is once they do a feed rash, a feed analysis. Uh, analysis, they then will go and do rations for you. Okay, cool. And then it's proportion to their body weight. So we're always balancing based on the weight of the animal, the stage of production, the analysis of the feedstuffs, availability, farmer's willingness. Sometimes I feel like my, my sheep are better fed than me. No comment. The good thing about a TMR, so a TMR is a total mixed ration. When you put it all together, what do they say? A sheep can sort pepper from fly shit. Like they literally, they sort better than chickens. They so a it. total mixed ration, a TMR machine, it mixes it up. So it just becomes a little harder for them to sort through it. So when they get a mouthful, they get a mouthful of everything instead of, I want a mouthful of corn until the corn's gone. And then I'm gonna have a mouthful of the really yummy second cut haylage because it's a little sweeter than the first cut haylage or, what, or whatever. I'm not sure if I'm on four or five, but the next thing I do is develop a spreadsheet ration so I can put it on the wall and put it in my loader and then I know what groups get what and anybody that's feeding my ewes when I'm not there, they have a spreadsheet. It's all on Excel on a spreadsheet. This is it here on the sheet. So all I do is Jamie gives me amount per ewe and I put that in this column here. Where's my, where's my mouse? I put that all in there and then the only thing that I ever have to change is how many ewes are in that group. And then it all just automatically spits out what I'm feeding and then I run along and design the pens. So today, I'm just changing this today because I had to, I um, moved some of these pens around. So I was just in the middle of doing this when Jamie came. So uh, this is the map for whoever's feeding. Number six, I guess we're on, is sometimes the weather can catch you off guard with your feeding. And I've often also called Jamie in a panic saying, it's so cold, it's minus 20 in here at night. What should I be doing with this ration? Because I feel like they're eating up the feed quick. And he always, typically we add you know, add 5%, add 10%, add enough that you're comfortable with what's left there at it after a given amount of time. Once you get a good feel for a ration, how many animals you're feeding, after a year, you're gonna figure out how, what those costs look like. It caught the cost of harvesting, the cost of cust any custom work that you have to do, the, the cost of labor feeding if you have ed any, you should always charge yourself labor if you're a farmer. I know a lot of farmers don't, but you should. A lot of people ask me, how much does it cost to feed a you? Blah, blah, blah. I could give you my cost, um, but it's not, it might not necessarily be, it will not be. Sorry, Jamie. I figured that out a couple years ago, maybe a year ago, two, no, I think it was two years ago. What we did a couple years ago is basically, literally jotted down all our prices, we have it all on the computer, but I had 36 cents for a lactating ration. And it also depends how light, how long you're feeding that too. Mm -hmm. um, 30 cents for a flush ration and 15 cents for a dry ration. It's gonna look different on everybody's farm because it depends how much you yield, it depends how much you put into it, all that nice stuff. The last thing we're gonna touch on is how important your feed, what you're feeding at what life cycle that you is at. When I dry off the ewe, a week before I pull off the lambs, about 10 days before, I'll actually put them on a dry hay only. So I get, I don't feed them any corn. You're basically, I you're change, dropping I from drop, a lactating level to a dry level. Right, and that's to, to help hopefully them. get them transitioned um, to wean a little bit faster and a little bit better, just to slow down that milk production. Yep. I'll feed that dry hay for another another 10 days to two weeks after and then they're good and dry hopefully by then. Depending on what life cycle they are, if, if you're gonna breed right away again, like if I, if I was, if I only had a month between when I'm weaning and when I'm uh, going to get them ready to get bred again, then you're wanna, gonna wanna increase your, you're wanna gonna increase your energy levels, right? Yeah, so that would be when you... Switch to a flush yeah. ration, right? Right. I always like to switch to a flush ration a couple weeks, two to four weeks before I actually want the breeding to happen depending on their body condition. After they're done lactating, they probably will need a little bit of a 
help to get to get back up and to get it conditioned. So we like to feed a flush ration. That's that change and that's more energy, and more protein. Yep. If I don't do it two weeks before I seed her, I definitely do it on the day I seed her because that's 12 days before I'm gonna breed. So right. it's almost your two weeks. And then I feed that, this is where I've always screwed up in the past, how long to feed that after you pull out your rams. And I think I've always come off it too quick. And it depends too, in your situation, you're now breeding for four days. Right. You have to watch that we have them on that ration long enough after the rams are taken away um, so that the fetal development and the, in those early stages that we're still feeding that you enough to properly help with the development of the fetus and the placenta, then we can feed a dry ration right. again for a, a period of time, which is going to be uh, much shorter if the longer the breeding season, the, the shorter, the shorter it is because you'll be almost because then you're back you're to, almost up to having to gear up again for late gestation. Whereas if with a four day breeding, we know that I've got a lot of time that they some can more be, absolute dates. Yeah, it's some so, hard deadlines, which I need all the time. How many people do you think just hit rewind? Like, ooh. Well, you for what sure. You so then they're on a dry ration until I usually can get away with going right up to four weeks yep. because because the everything is in line, they're good condition. It's very important when you're getting up to the end of her, when before she's gonna lamb, how much weight is actually lambs versus her, her. Own body weight, right? So yeah. So it's very important we're increasing, those lambs inside are growing exponentially at that point, those last four to six weeks, right? Right, and so the, the lambs and the fluid and yeah. that's associated with the pregnancy could weigh approximately 20% of that yo's total weight. Body weight. The problem is that it's also restricting how much food she can take in right. because she just physically runs out of room. She can't eat enough and so we have to, that's where we have to start changing the diet back to a higher energy diet so that it, she can eat a smaller just, meal and right. get the, right. the energy she needs. Right or all the nutrients she needs, so not it's just energy, because it's more concentrated, right. because there's just physically not the space. If we don't do that, she could crash right after lambing because... Uh, or even before, right? Or, or before, ketosis. yeah. So yeah, very important those last four to six weeks to increase. So that's why I have that flush ration, which is also really good for breeding, and those last few weeks before lambing. Because otherwise, if they're gonna try and use their body reserves, to right. feed their lambs, uh, either you know feeding the lambs through their blood, basically when it, it's still a pregnancy, to feeding the lambs with milk after pregnancy. And so if they don't have the body reserves and we're not giving them enough feed, the first thing that's gonna lack is milk production. Right. Because the, the ewe is gonna worry about looking after herself. So, should we recap? Let's recap, number one. Make a plan. Make a plan, figure out what you got, what you need. What How you, are you gonna do it? What you can produce. What you can produce. Number two, once it's harvested, take a sample. Just take a sample, give it to your feed rat or get, take it to a lab yourself, whatever it takes. Cause you don't know what to measure if you don't know what you have. Can't manage it if you don't measure it. Right. Number three, get a trusted source to help you do these things to make a ration. Number four, your delivery mechanism. So, so make it easy. I do it on Excel. Maybe you want to do it on a, on a whiteboard. Yep, some which do it would on work. a whiteboard. Some do um, it on a scrap of paper that they take as, in the as, tractor with and, them. And as long as you have a system, as long as you have a system and it works and your people can use it, then go with it. I don't remember what number five was. Number six though was or five, whatever it was, six is a. is uh, six A. Adjust for your weather. So if it's really really hot and they're leaving too much feed, you might want to reduce a bit. If it's really, really cold, they need more energy to, mm -hmm. to meet their needs. Mm -hmm. The last one, number... 6B. 6B. How important each ration is and the transition between each ration and how each ration has a purpose. And that's why we have them. Good that was really good. Happy sheep farming. Thank you. Uh, Jay, and a little side note, Jamie's been Jamie's been a good friend. We knew each other kind of in university, but yet I don't mm -hmm. really remember. I think I was old. Was I was always in the library, and you were always in the so bar. So full of crap. You could be in the library, because I never was, so I would never even know that. You could totally tell me that. For, that could be true. I just know you, and I know that's a lie. Thanks for watching. If you do have questions, throw them in the comments. 
uh, down below. I will forward all this stuff to them. And if they want to answer me, they will. And then I will answer you. I thought I was chatty. <laughs> Till next time. <laughs>